Friday on GB News. Every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it today! I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good evening, I'm Tatiana Sanchez. This is the latest from the GB Newsroom. The RMT has announced further strikes across network rail over the Christmas period. The union says rail staff will walk out from 6pm on Christmas Eve until 6am on the 27th of December, with next week's strikes going ahead as planned. It said it will put the latest offer from Network Rail to its members with a recommendation to reject, claiming the deal will lead to unsafe practices. Transport Secretary Mark Harper says it's very disappointing the RMT hasn't played its part in continuing talks instead of holding strikes. We've made sure that there was a new improved payoff, which I think is fair to RMT members. What is disappointing is the fact that the RMT uh, not only have not called off strikes, they've actually called more strikes for the Christmas period. And I would urge them to call those strikes off, put this pay deal to their members with a recommendation that it be accepted. GB News understands an eighth child has died after contracting Strep A. It follows a 12-year-old child being the first secondary school student to have died after contracting the invasive infection. The UK Health Security Agency confirmed a single case was identified at Colf School in South London. Downing Street is urging parents to be on the lookout for symptoms and says there are no shortages of antibiotics. More than 850 cases were reported in the week starting the 14th of November, compared to over 180 for the same period last year. The government says changes to the levelling up and regeneration bill will place local communities at the heart of the planning system. Further amendments will be set out by the levelling up department tomorrow. The government is also set to abolish compulsory house building targets following requests from Conservative MPs aiming to protect the environment. Supporters of the proposal say this would also ensure local communities aren't forced to accept unwelcome development. Alongside new measures in the bill, the government will also give councils the power to refuse further planning permission. Labour is warning millions of people are missing out on getting serious medical conditions diagnosed because they're struggling to get a GP appointment. The party has estimated figures from a recent survey which shows 13.8% of patients in England couldn't book to see a doctor the last time they tried. It said the latest GP patient survey data shows more than 5 million people couldn't get a GP appointment when they tried to make one in October. 
And the government has declared Christmas has officially begun at Westminster. As the House of Commons Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle announced a Christmas tree light switch on outside Parliament. MPs, peers and parliamentary staff were joined by a choir who sung an array of Christmas carols. TV online and DAB Plus Radio. This is GB News. Now it's over to headliners. Hello, welcome to Headliners. I am Simon Evans. Joining me tonight, we have comedians Josh Howie and Nick Dixon. Good evening, gentlemen. So, let us take a look at tomorrow's front pages. We start with Tuesday's Mail, I believe. Uh, Fury at Sussex's Netflix claim of war on Meghan. Uh, the uh, Telegraph, Tuesday's Telegraph, has Sunak uh, abandons housing target. That's it, catch up. There is another picture of the uh, Sussexes there in a typically emotive pose, but the Sunak story is the headline. Tuesday's eye paper uh, leads with antibiotics en masse for children in strep A schools. A bewildering headline. We will be having a probe into that front page very shortly and also a UK health warning on uh, very cold weather. Tuesday's Guardian. The Prime Minister backs down on housing goals in face of pressure from Tory MPs. Uh, picture there, however, a couple of lads who are not backing down on their goals. Uh, hopefully this Saturday, Tuesday's Times, one in seven denied GP appointment. And there is that familiar image of Meghan there fighting back tears at all the injustice she has had to confront. Tuesday's Star, finally, get the popcorn in, folks. Uh, and that is once again on those two privacy-loving individuals in the uh, United States. Those were your front pages. Let's have a look at them in some more detail. <music> oh, Josh, I think you're kicking off this one with uh, an in-depth look into the Guardian front page. Yeah, so they have a... They're, I think they're the only paper to not have a photo of Meghan and Harry on the front. Although, actually. if you just... If you, if you squint, you could mistake those two, couldn't you? Possibly, <laughs> just about. Uh, <laughs> you'd have to be, like, half-blind, but... Harry uh, Maguire needs two, a ginger wig. Two guys here pointing at each other. I'm not sure who they are. Anyway, uh, earlier on in their romance than Harry. Is that what it is? Is this uh, they yeah. maybe future royals? Uh, but the main story they're going is uh, PM backs down on housing goals in face of pressure from Tory MPs. This is meant to be the bill where they were going to be pushing through to build 300,000 homes yeah. a year. Now they're basically watering it down a bit and saying that it's that, an aspiration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And and this was part of what this government needs to be doing, what any government who's in power needs to be doing. We need more homes built in this country. This was seen as the main tool that would make that happen. Yeah. And there's obviously a danger now by making it, as you say, aspirational. Uh, that's That target is going to be way off. So it's, And it's, is it... Presumably this is a sap... Is it a sap or a sop? I can never totally remember. Is sop. it a sop? It's a yeah. sop to the uh, Tory MPs yeah. who have nice, comfortable well, rural is, yeah. and suburban... There's about 100 Tory MPs who would rebel against the bill, so they were hoping to make some sort of compromise, but now, basically, Sunak yeah. uh, has blinked first, and there's criticism here that he's putting the party unity over the national interest, but I'd argue that that's what Tory's been doing for 12 years now. I, mean, I don't know what you think about it. We've been around this housing block a few times, but the, it does seem to me that there is a confusion between the quantity of housing and the quality of housing. That's one thing I always find slightly... I think an awful lot of people think, oh, my God, I don't want some hideous housing development on the edge of town. You know, those loads of, like, matchbox houses, do you know what I mean? The, the mm. kind of ones that don't even look as if they're made out of proper bricks. They look as if they're probably concrete with some sort of... Brick yeah. type uh, I think I live in one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think if they would just like kind of just be a little bit more creative and put it on a little bit better quality, yeah, yeah. you know, people would be a lot less hostile to yeah. the expansion of their villages. Why beauty matters, as yeah. Scruton would say, they've made everything very, very ugly. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, I mean, but it, it, yeah, it's, of course it's NIMBYism, their constituents have houses and they, they don't want the houses, ugly houses built around them and they don't want the prices to go down, obviously. No. And, but the same thing is, as well, Labour would have lent them the votes, I hear, so obviously Sunak is worried about about uniting the party, and he's worried about getting re-elected. And there is a thing, actually, though. The other, the other, other argument I've tried to make before is, is, of course, about immigration. There is, a, I think, you may have seen this meme where someone is talking about um, that 
that wages were roughly in parity with housing prices until 1997, and then right. something happened, yeah. and then the X-Files music comes in, and a graph <laughs> comes in, because in 1997, there was a huge spike in immigration in the, in the Blair years, yeah. so, you know, that is one argument yeah, we well, could make. Yeah, well, that's 1997, and now we're now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. So it's even worse. Houses. It's yeah, worse than need, ever. But, but we need houses... Absolutely well, need houses, and there, we're not, not. No, we need to build as well. I yeah, agree. We clearly have no plan for uh, sending immigrants back, so, <laughs> so we're going to have to find somewhere for them to live. It does seem to me. I mean, I, my parents live up in uh, in Norfolk. Whenever I visit them, there is a new housing development along the side of the A11, something that I haven't seen before. You know, they sprout a lot. I think it does depend where you live. If you live in in London, you get the impression that it's just, uh, you know, uh, an insoluble. Mess, you know that there's nothing going on. There are there are more developments that, um, going on elsewhere. Have you heard that London is actually nowhere near as dense as Paris, for example? So actually, really? we could, even though it feels dense when you're walking around and you're on the tube, yeah. apparently it could be a lot more actually, dense. Where Nick and I live, there's a load of new developments there is, going on. But apparently, what we have is a lot of two-story developments, whereas France they'll build them higher. So for some reason, we're yeah, doing yeah. this two-story thing. I think that would be a really good thing if instead of people thinking regular two-story houses or massive tower blocks, if they were to think in terms of four or five-story. You know, yeah. the Parisian style terrorism would be solved. something. Exactly. Fantastic. Well done. I feel I have got a, I've got a handle on that now. Hopefully the phone will be ringing by the time we get off here. What else have we got? Uh, Nick, you're next with The Times, is it? Yeah, The Times is focusing on the strike. Its rail union delivers more misery with a Christmas Eve strike. So there was already going to be strikes on the 13th, 14th, 16th and 17th and in January 3rd, 4th, 6th and 7th. But now there's also going to be one 6pm Christmas Eve till 6am oh. on December 27th, which is a, it's a nasty time to do it isn't it? And of course they've been accused of ruining people's Christmas. And I do think it is a bad look, especially after we had the lockdown Christmases where Christmas was banned and in future we've already got people yeah. talking about banning Christmas because now uh, Christians are a minority in the country. So Christmas will be cancelled next year. This could have been That's our last Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> this is our last Christmas, Josh. Gosh, and, do you think uh, Turkey will strike bothered. next no, year? No, I'm, I'm bothered by this. I'm bothered by the fact they've been offered 8%. They've turned that right. down. 8% is huge. That's more than nurses are being. You know, yeah. they're already on. The staff are on forty-four thousand. I think the drivers are on yeah. fifty-seven or something. And then on top of that, the fact is that every household funded the railways to six hundred pounds during COVID. That's our money. And now, yeah. what the time of year we need it? Yeah. And what they're saying? No. I mean, look, eight percent. That is fair. We are a fair country. That's over fair. Yeah. And inflation is going to go down. They want it eleven percent. It's not going to be eleven percent in six months' time. So yeah. I think this is disgusting. Sure, I'm glad I think... we got that rant from you, but I actually just meant you're less bothered about Christmas because I, <laughs> I heard you're working Christmas Day, which means you can't be as bothered. I <laughs> but I wanted to get the train in. The thing that I'm genuinely upset about is now is um, I've got a book. As soon as this, we're off air, I'm going to book my airport because that was my deal for doing Christmas was I get to go away on Boxing Day. Ah, so I need to right. book airport parking. Uh, for Boxing yeah, Day, because yeah. that's going to fill up. So that's my tip. If anyone's going away, get that airport parking book I, now. I would love to work Christmas Day. I still think my mum would forgive me, because, you know, it's the one day you should probably see your family. Anyway, sorry to derail. No, no I mean, I think no derail very good. I think the, the funny thing about rail strikes and all that, there's usually one half of the calculation that's secretly relieved, isn't there? That's the trouble, you know. <laughs> there'll be half of the people thinking, oh, God, we don't have to leave the house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is the trouble at Christmas. You need to be forced to get out there, and then you create memories. But bad um, optics. Do you want to look at the... Uh, you don't look at the, the Megan thing, we'll go with that at no, the end. Shall we? We'll go with that with the, from the Daily Mail. The, but um, There's the one in seven GP. We want to have a look at the eye. We want to oh. have a look... Oh, sorry, did you want to have something else? What was that? No, not, not massively, just that it's all, they've also gone with one in seven denied GP appointments. Yeah. Basically, five million people unable to get them this month. It won't surprise anyone, but that's their other story. Yeah. It's bad. It has... It's spiralling out of control a little bit. That, so the antibiotics, same with health. This yeah. is en masse for children because of this strep A outbreak, which has taken some very young, tragic lives. It has. Uh, eight Eight children have died now. Uh, one of those children is in this is the first child in secondary school. Uh, this is four times as much as normal. It's built up, and there's some people saying that might be because, of course, people weren't intermingling during COVID, mm. during the lockdown. So it's sort of th that went to historic lows, and now it's built up and sort of overcompensating for that. So you think that there would have been one or two spread yeah, out one over or two that would time. Have had, and Not that we would have developed immunity or anything. No, no. no, no just, yeah. Well, some of the kids would have developed immunity. It's not like um, I don't know how it spread exactly. It's not like a kissing disease as they used to no, call I it with the glandular fever. No, I think it's just that. spread like a like. A, but it's bacterial. Yeah. Uh, but this sounds like a, a very sensible idea. I mean, there's 
there's always, of course, this balance between oversubscribing subscribing antibiotics, but they had yes. already done this in a school where right. a child did die. And I think any steps necessary to protect yeah. the, the safety of children. So this is just a kind of troop surge with that. Get them in there, get, get the penicillin out. Uh, there is a bit, it's slightly confusing. They talk about uh, they want to give it to um, pro, on a prophylactic basis. So I was like, is that via condoms or? <laughs> yeah, it is an odd word that, isn't it? Prophylactic, it's, it, 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 it really just means preventative, you know, okay. like, but... It has such it's a strong it, resonance. It, 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 yeah, yeah. That prevents bing, the thing. Yeah. There's also a nice little thing here in the front page of the eye saying, uh, young Christians, we're counterculture now. And I was thinking of you, Nick, when I saw that. Legends, I yeah. Like, yeah. You, <laughs> like you raving away, <laughs> dropping some pills. Uh, uh, yeah, Jesus, yeah. Paul Jesus. Joseph Watson in front of you. In front saying of your mouth. prayers is the new rock and roll. I've been <laughs> saying it for ages. Well, Duran Duran. Uh, UK health warning is Arctic blunt. Not, not a huge mm. story, but, uh, but it has maybe worth something. Hasn't it? Yeah, it is, it is kind of bleakly cold, actually, mm. walking around today. I felt it suddenly. I felt my, my cheer draining away. <laughs> I'm not very really good. I, yeah, I Months of endurance. I took yeah. a perverse pleasure in going for a run the other day with my shorts and T-shirt, just to prove I'm from the north. Oh, yeah. Just looking at all the pansies fully clothed, you know what I mean? Well, we got <laughs> a, we've, we've made a commitment to go into the sea on, on Christmas Eve. Oh, I've, I've seen remember. you running into the sea. It was yeah, on Twitter, yeah. wasn't it? I know. Bit that, is, that builds <laughs> the fan base up. So, uh, finally, from the front pages, we're going to the Daily Mail to the story, the only story that anyone's really interested in. Mm. Yes, Fury. Fury. Fury is Sussex's Netflix claim of war on Meghan. So, of course, there's been these trailers about Harry and Meghan's new Netflix bonanza. And uh, there's this the great trailer where they talk about how great it was. She was a rock star. Everyone loved her. And then everything changed. And it goes, like, dark. And it's now everything was <laughs> bad. And the funny thing about that is they claim that there's someone saying it's racism, it's hatred. It's like, well, that doesn't really work with the constants and the variables. Because unless she suddenly changed race, yeah. what really changed is that people got to know what she was like. And it yeah. turned out not very nice. <laughs> and that's basically what happened. And also, if we're being very fair, the media likes to tear people down, of course, and build them back up. It's what our yep. media loves to do. Yep. But the idea that it was suddenly it was racist, when everyone wanted desperately to love Meghan, and all that happened was we learnt what she was like and we went, nah. It is funny, that, isn't it? I remember when a lot of people, like the, the male, were coming at her and, uh, and creating the sort of impression that she was a nightmare and, uh, and other people were saying, oh, my God, I can't believe it's so racist. Mm. There were loads of examples of every previous... Person, you know, Diana most famously, but even Charles himself, you know, was constantly lampooned. Yeah, well, Diana was literally hounded to death, so it doesn't yeah. get much worse than that. I think that, no. but that when they were showing those articles, I do remember them, they put them, like, the, the, the two princesses next to each yes. other, and, you know, one was wearing a dress, and the way, the exact, they were basically selling him in a very There was, there was a way. little bit between, between Kate and her, yeah, but... I mean, whether that was down to racism or just, yeah. or, like, these other factors. I'm sure it's no picnic uh, negotiating the political minefield of the royal family and that's obviously another area she came on stuck as yeah. many of us probably would mm. it's a good question whether she ever intended to be stuck though or whether it right. was always i mean that's the question isn't it whether she was just throwing a grappling hook in right, you know, right, to, right. Uh, and we know the answer definitely what well, you i wonder saying. if it just wasn't <laughs> the reality of it wasn't what she thought it would be no uh in terms of it but i mean i would argue that when she first sort of emerged on the scene i'd say uh, uh, maybe this is just a puzzle. But people were somewhat excited I by so. her mixed yeah. heritage, by yeah. her be, but, but, bit of uh, Hollywood, bit of, bit of yeah, bit of glamour, yeah. and also I think her ethnicity was seen as a positive thing, a sort of modernising. Absolutely. And so uh, this idea that to the she was rejected that... because of her ethnicity, I think, is, uh, yeah. I think yeah. I go with you. She... I think it, it's funny as well. You say it, it probably didn't meet her expectations. She probably thought she'd be yeah. queen within about twelve months, and was surprised that that's not how it worked. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's so self-involved. Anyway. Anyway, coming up, we have Braverman. Wants Albanians banned. We want Starmer agrees with Brexit basics. And why young people are taking more risks online. That's all in a couple of minutes. We'll see you shortly. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television and online across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. Hello there, it's Eamon Holmes here from Breakfast on GB News. We're not just on your television and your screens, you know. We're on DAB Plus Digital Radio, so you can listen to your favourite shows on the move. If you've not yet listened to GB News Radio, it's very simple. We're on your radio player and tune in apps. On your smart speaker, phone or tablet, or online at gbnews.uk. Take us with you wherever you go. GB News Radio. You never have to miss a moment of the People's Channel. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's news channel. And welcome back to Headliners with me, Simon Evans, still joined by Josh Howey and Nick Dixon. So let's take a look, uh, take a look inside these newspapers. Nick, Tuesday's Times uh, has Suella Braverman, who'd like to see Albanians all banned. Well, pretty much, yeah. Suella Braverman <laughs> plans asylum ban for migrants from Albania. And it's, it's this new list of safe countries, and it's called the White List, as a coincidence, no racial element intended. But that was, an, that was an existing Home Office White List, but they've sort of changed it slightly. And they're going to have this other list of countries where you're allowed to be a man, but you can come in if you're a wom woman or a child, but not a man, because you're deemed safe, which is like places like Ghana, Nigeria, Gambia, Kenya, et cetera, Liberia. Iran? No, they're not. Well, they weren't not listed here. Malawi, Mali, Sierra Leone. You know what's on the safe list? Okay. Ukraine. Okay. Ukraine. They do. They've admitted they need to update the safe list because it, <laughs> it has Ukraine on it. And this is this is uh, Nick Timothy has co-drafted it with it. He he was a little bit controversial during the Theresa May uh, era uh, yeah. for some policies that didn't go down that well. Interesting guy. And we have to obviously do something, as David Davis was saying the other day, that we are actually in terms of the we, we've had fewer complaints against us in the U European Court of Human Rights than Albania. So Albania are deemed a safe mm. country. It's a technical. We should be going there. Right, you're right. Yes. It's, a, it's a technical definition, so there's no reason to take this many Albanians. Now, p the critics of this have said, well, what about the 1951 Refugee Convention? And I would counter that this is a kind of emergency, so we, we do need to actually do something about it. And I, I think this is, a, you know, it's a, decent, it's a decent start, you know, in lieu of putting immigra immigration to zero, which yeah. obviously we all want. But we can, you know, this is, this is a decent start. I mean, Sweden are doing it. They're not taking lots of Albanian people because they say it's a safe country, so it's quite reasonable. I think it's reasonable. I think there's an awful lot of, of public discourse on this particular aspect of it, and it won't be very long if they're not careful before a Donald Trump character comes along and starts characterising Albanians in the way that he characterised Mexicans, you know, and you start to whip up a little bit of actual antipathy at the moment. I think there's grumbling, you know, but mm. there is definitely a sense that some people are playing the system and it's not going to... It won't go away. They're absolutely playing the system. Yeah. But the other thing is that there is an hypocrisy here, and I got abuse when I said this last time, is they're coming here, most of them, not to sell drugs, they're coming here because they have work, they're getting paid cash. If you want to have your loft done cheap, mm. you want to get your buildings done cheap, that's why they're here. They're here for the work. Albanians. Albanians, yeah, okay. in the building trade. Yeah. So, they're coming here not to sponge off, but they're coming here to work because they are being given opportunities. Now, I'm not saying that's right. I'm yeah. just saying that's the reality of it. Right. And um, what by other Albanians? Or? No, by by British people who want their lofts built cheaply well, no, but, or their no, work done. Well, I mean, no by British the company. Person, there's obviously some kind of inter intermediary, well, isn't there? Well, yeah. I mean, you've got people who have building companies and they're employing Albanians and they're getting. But why them are they employing Albanians? Because they're cheaper. Well, they're not going to be cheaper than Iraqis or Syrians, are they? Well, no, but they have, they do a lot of building and stuff, and it's harder for Iraqis and Syrians to get in. Those, right. and those, and Iraqis and Syrians are arguably actual asylum seekers, as opposed to these are a lot of builders right. coming over. Okay. You see what I mean? With yeah. actual. I mean, I know for a fact that building. there are certain other less savoury professions. I, I know, but, but I'm saying, I, I'm sure, but they are, a lot of them are coming over for work. Yeah. I'm not saying that makes it right. I'm just no. saying that's, a lot of them are coming because. They have got jobs yeah. or, you know, illegal jobs, yep. cash in hand, but they are earning money. Who abused you for that last time? 
I just got a bunch of <laughs> email, a bunch of his fan base. The list I knew said. But I wanted to. But I the did list want does to... date back to Labour though in 2002. So Labour originally. Oh, well, look, this is the interesting thing at the very end of it. Well, no, but what, what they're saying is that there is a danger here. Okay, and I agree. Something absolutely. They are playing the system. Something should be done. But what the danger is is that by just saying that anybody on this white list should now just automatically be kicked out, mm. they are still accepting people on that white list as genuine asylum seekers. So just because those countries themselves might be seen as, oh, like, OK and whatever, there are political... There might be polit people seeking political asylum. So there are reasons why people, even if they're on these safe countries, still might seek asylum and are still being granted asylum. Yeah. That's the danger. So I just don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because, they, you know, when they talk about, like, rejecting, leaving the uh, European uh, Human Rights Court, whatever, that affects us. That's all. Josh, Tuesday's Independent has Keir Starmer's evolving views on the single market. And if you don't like them, he has others. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, exactly. Keir Starmer here basically saying whatever it takes to rim, uh, win back the red wall. Mm. Uh, he agrees with Lee Voters' basic case for Brexit despite backing Remain. Uh, so he's basically arguing that he sees the point about this, the idea of uh, essentially what, what it is is control... Um, I would argue building that meaningful communities. I think building meaning, yeah. yeah. But, but take back control. Take back yeah. control. I would argue that we're not in control. We are on our second pri unelected prime minister. So where's this control? Mm. Also, let's not just pretend that we weren't or the the country wasn't sold this idea of financial benefits mm. that have been proven now to be just a load of cobwash. But the, yes. It's a good thing that I think that he at least is showing an understanding of why a lot of people did vote to leave. What do you ah, think? Majority do you of well, it's funny, I, almost, I was going to say almost the exact same thing as Josh, shockingly, but, yeah, he's saying that he, he's finally at least showing... And, and you can cynically say he wants to win the election, which, of course, he yeah. does. Yeah. But he's, at least his rhetoric is showing empathy with leavers for once. Mm. But it's obviously because they've worked out it's the way to get the red wall back. It's social conservatism. The weird thing is that Gordon Brown, he wasn't even elected the first time, seems to be behind a lot of this, and he's pushing this thing to abolish the House of Lords. Oh. He's actually yeah. more radical than Starmer. And they want to sort of give power back to people. And they say it's the biggest transfer of power from Westminster to British people, which I highly question. We will still be able to be locked in our homes at a moment's notice. It's about uh, taking civil servants out of Westminster and sending them to the north or whatever, 50,000 civil servants, which is fine, but I don't think it'll do that much. So I'm a bit... But bit Gordon Brown, then, is the sort of the Dick Cheney of the uh, of this uh, coming administration? Yeah, yeah. He's a, the, he, the power behind the throne? Yeah, he's around. And he, 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 there, was a, there was an argument between him and Starmer aides on the House of Lords specifically and Starmer's aides were basically saying calm down a bit Gordon we don't need to scrap everything because it's quite radical yeah. whereas Brown wants the House of Lords gone in this within five years of a Labour government. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, but I, I mean I think it's ridiculous. I, I do think there does need to be change but I think the idea of spending this political capital Squandering it, as some people have commentated yeah. and said, I do think is a bit, uh, a bit silly and a bit short-sighted because there's a lot of other stuff to be going on. The good news is that people have said for years now, "Where's Starmer's policies? Where's his?" All right, well, he's got some policies now, so yeah. we can criticise them or not. At least he's got that something. That is true. His head is above the parapet. Uh, Tuesday's Guardian. Now, Nick and some extraordinarily weasel words here employed to discuss the spectrum of online behaviour from the criminal to the merely risky. Well, a slightly mm. loaded question there, Simon. Well, <laughs> statement, but it is the Guardian and it is the EU. So, yes, yeah. risky online behaviour almost normalised among young people. <laughs> study says... I know. No one knows what any of this means. But this, this is clearly the EU. So it's a study done... It's, it's, a, it's the UEL, University of East London, mm. but funded by the EU, oh, which basically boom. says... Which says... Well, I'll explain why it uh, is a big boon in a minute, but it basically explains why people do bad things online, but it ends up including virtually everything like looking at pornographic material, oh. posting hate speech. Oh, I mean, trolling. Very loose that's definition. That's, your, that's your Monday morning. Is, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Choose the, is the hate speech. But, yeah, it's, it's... I mean, so... And, by the way, we still won this. The UK won. They, did a, 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 they went through criminal and non-criminal but risky behaviour. Well, no one knows what it means. But the UK was the bottom at 58% and Spain was the worst at 75%. Wow. So whatever this is, we, still, we still won. But here's my problem. The EU recently has tried to ban or threatened to ban Twitter. They're threatening Elon Musk already. They hate free speech. They obviously want to use studies like this to justify it. They justify it in terms of safety, but it's yep. about banning free speech and being yep. a, an authoritarian dictatorship. But, and also, just briefly, 
They mentioned the online safety bill, someone here saying it's a good thing. But the online safety bill is flawed as well. It, it's, it's still going to be a big problem. They've left Section 127 in, which allows people like Dankula to be prosecuted. So I'm very skeptical of the online safety bill. But as I was well. very, I personally was skeptical to the headline stuff that they were, as you say, there were things that were, I think, perfectly normal, if slightly kind of laddish behaviour. I think looking at online pornography, I suspect they've massively underestimated the amount of people who yeah, actually yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah when they said it's 58%, yeah, right. Yeah, Not 58%. <laughs> men. Yeah. What are you talking about? Teenage boys? I can't imagine. I mean, I, I, you know, the, the lengths we used to have to go to and were prepared to go to in order to get to pornography, you know. Literally, you'd be in a kind of forest. Travelling yeah, exactly. <laughs> travelling to France. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> go on a French exchange. Belgian service station. Yeah. As, uh, on a, like on a Saturday yeah, night. Are you right. finished with that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> but also, the this whole thing, I mean, I don't know what they mean by trolling. I mean, that's one of those words that means different things. Things. Celebrities think of it as just being uh, as. Uh, I think there actually is a serious. Them, they, as a teenage, as a, a parent of a teenager, yeah, uh, who doesn't participate in this, but there is a lot of issues at their school, which is what undermining confidence. That's yeah, people like with in WhatsApp groups and sort of talking. So what we would call trolling, yeah, which is what you know I'll get in a bit. Uh, when I'm on the taxi home, uh, is is there? You know, there there is bullying, this online bullying, and and you're sensitive, and you're yeah. But at the root of it is a war for the internet. The, it, we've got a war for the internet. The EU wants to control it. The, you know, people like the Democrats, whoever. Whereas people like Elon Musk want it to be free. And this is the this is the coming yes. war. Yes, the coming war. That should be <laughs> the new radio force news. We won't get it. Josh, uh, Tuesday's eye now. Half a million kids, neither in work nor education. That's. Neat. That's neat, that's neat, that's neat. Yeah, the highest number in five years, data shows. So it's up to 630,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, which is what it... Um, which is you know, even before COVID. So, um, and, uh, yeah, it's... It, I never sort of understood this concept before, but, they're, yeah, they're basically what they... I didn't realise the terminology was economically inactive. Yes. Is it, so it's, it's not just... Well, like, they're neat. Not, yeah, so they're, so they're, not, they're neither in education, or, uh, yeah. employment, or training. That's what the exactly. So what are they doing? Yeah. They're, all, yeah, exactly. they're all bullying each other online and watching. Yeah, porn. I guess you know it's weird, isn't it? But it's a funny thing. I think when you get to our age, you look back at, or even possibly Nick's age, you look back and you go, "This is the this is the crucible. This is the crucial years. These mm. are the times to start making some sort of progress and, yeah. and like mapping out what you want to do with your life." But when you're actually at that age, it's 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 strangely easy and plausible, isn't it, to just, just sort of waste a couple of years? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> By the way, I should yeah. say we should look looking at the monitor. It's nice looking at Nick. Cut into Nick. And then <laughs> cut to me. Yeah. Hey, this is like the aging, and then finally yeah, 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 finishing. Part of the Christmas <laughs> finishing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Tim <laughs> Ronnie sketch. We're like, we're like trans <laughs> transforming. I into look a... up to him because <laughs> yeah, he's older than me. Um, I feel bad for these kids. What do yeah, you think? yeah. I, I, I do feel bad for them. You've got a government taking virtually all their potential pay in tax. You've got yeah. the fact that benefits often pays more than work. You've got the fact they're never going to own a house and the country's in general decline. Why would they go out and work in a way? And they've got to make it pay to work and they've got to make sure it's delivered by competent people because, as it says here, the scheme has a chaotic delivery. Mm. So that's yeah. a big problem and as well. And that, that chaotic delivery, I think that would be the inscription on the tombstone of this, tombstone of this government. Chaotic uh, it, delivery. Not very possibly fair. Uh, there was a tweet the other day, in fact, yesterday, uh, positing or, or just musing on the possibility that we will soon start seeing the effects of a sort of new kind of a new flavour of mental illness, which is the um, demotivation, the, the, the uh, lack of, of enthusiasm, the ennui that Goblin comes mode. from a recognition that as soon as you train for something, AI is invented that can do it better. Uh, mm. And that the, they're seeing quite a lot of uh, chatbots and artistic mm. commercial illustrators, that kind of thing. I wonder if this is part of it. I don't. I don't. It's oh, I think could, and actually, one of the, word, the what we're going to talk about later, the the most popular word of the year or whatever, ties into that. A little yeah, bit yeah, possibly, yeah. So yeah. Stick we must around. Go, let's stick it for that then. Nick, uh, Tuesday's Telegraph has the latest in Irish. Uh, separatism. Yeah. Uh, it seems we're swinging our May. Maybe it's time to... Tell us about Ireland. South, is it? <laughs> this is my favourite topic. Um, I grew up in the area when I'm still a bit scared to comment on Irish politics, but basically twice as many Northern Irish voters would stay in the UK rather than choose a United Ireland. This is an Ipsos poll. It's a boon for the DUP. It's a bit of a blow for Sinn Féin, who, who thought it wasn't going to be quite like this. They, right. put, they wanted unity referendums by 2030, and because uh, now there's also a Catholic uh, majority for the first time. And so they thought, this is great for us, but the DUP is saying this proves we're right 
to keep the boycott going uh, over the Northern Ireland Protocol, and they still want to be. It's nice that someone wants to stay with us. Yeah, Scotland does I mean, No one else does. Two to one, though, and that is yeah. despite a Catholic majority. Well, that's saying twenty-one. Twenty-one percent of uh, voters from a Catholic background would choose to. St that to is stay. quite surprising, isn't it? For two reasons: one, the traditional loyalty, but also the the uh, the South or whatever you want to call it, Ireland or Era. As, I mean, there is some suspicion that they cook the books a little bit, but their their GDP per capita is very, very high. They in some in some. But then they have to pay to go to see a GP. Uh, also, right. they have to. They I think they pay eight times more for prescriptions. Right. So there are good things about being part of the UK. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I mean, I'm I'm made GB up by news. that to be honest. Get the GB fact news. that they that they want to stick around is really quite heartwarming. It is, especially yeah. after we've endured so many years of bad tempered, you know. Misandry from the Scots, you know, just like endlessly. Do you sort of look at them favour like they're the one I think that got the away? Good you, do you think that they're like the? Do you think that they were the, 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 the sort of attractive girl that you know you were friends with at school? If and then enough, actually, though, you loved her all think, along. I think if you ever go to the Edinburgh Festival as a comedian, you do mm. recognise that the Scots regard Ireland as like the uh, the funner uncle. Oh, really? You know, and they regard us as the, the English comedians as considerably less welcome, generally speaking. You start from a lower state. Have you done the Edinburgh Festival? Yeah, but I never will again, which is a great thing. Yeah. I've moved into commentary. So now when, pe <laughs> when people insult me online and say I'm a so-called comedian, I'm like, beautiful, because I'm not a comedian anymore. Yeah. I'm a serious commentator I'm now. a once called. Coming up, Republicans may support ditching the US Constitution. Uh, more young people are taking drugs and Britain is about to lose its marbles, or is it? We'll find out in a couple of minutes. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Simon Evans. Let's jump right back into it with Josh and Nick. Josh, we have Tuesday's Guardian now. And Republican moderates are tying themselves in knots over Donald Trump's perfectly reasonable demand that the Constitution be suspended and he be installed as a lifetime dictator. Yeah, fine. Republican moderate refuses to disown him over constitutional threat. Uh, this is Dave Joyce of Ohio, mm -hmm. who is now the chair of the Republican governance group. Right. Uh, was basically in an interview and just continually pushed about whether, and he kept on sort of being like, well, I'll vote for whoever is, I don't think, you know, and they're like, but he said this, and they're like, yeah, well, I don't think he would implement. And they said, well, 
if he gets in, would you? He's like, look, I'll vote for whoever. So essentially, that's how they finish the interview with him saying, I can't believe... Yeah. The interview just saying, I can't believe you're actually saying you would willingly vote for someone who wants to... This is what they've done, though, isn't it? It's very clever. I mean, I'm not saying it's entirely illegitimate, but they, they, starting from the 6th of January and all points onward from that, they have mm. kind of been able to present Trump as being essentially like the devil incarnate, you know, and a threat to democracy, which obviously there is some evidence, you know, if you want to see it, that he, that he might well <coughs> represent. <coughs> but it, it, it does kind of create the danger, or the alternative danger, of a sort of one-party state mentality where, where they're kind of going, listen, if, you know, if you're going to follow that, that would well, be... No, I, I mean, I 100% agree with you. Look, a healthy democracy needs strong counterpoints to each other, yeah. which is why I think, to, you know, this country's gone so down the toilet in the last few years because we had such a terrible Labour yes. uh, opposition. Yes, now is. you've got Republicans being cowards. I know Nick's going to do a counterpoint to this, and that's fine. But the fact is that they're, you know, they're afraid for their own fan base. They're afraid of that whole MAGA community, mm. whereas very few of them are actually standing up and going, you know what? This is wrong. I'm putting their country first. Yeah, and it isn't really necessary. What do you think? Nick? Well, obviously something very different. So Trump's, Trump it made a clumsy point. I've got the truth here from Truth Social. Go, go truth. He said, so with the revelation of massive and widespread fraud and deception in working closely with big tech companies, the DNC and Democrat Party, do you throw the presidential election results of 2020 out and declare the rightful winner, or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type of magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. So it's not great, but his point is, <laughs> his point is, once we've, but he's clarified it today and he said, obviously I just meant with the fraud in the election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's saying they've broken no, well, I think with fraud. That. I agree with you, I do, I do agree. And when he you. put founders in inverted commas, that's just Trump weird punctuation. Yeah. He doesn't disrespect the founders, that's just him being weird. But, so he's updated and said, look, I'm talking about fraud. Now, Firstly, the Democrats, the idea that they care about the Constitution is laughable. I mean, they're against the First and Second Amendments. We've proved that. They're against gun, they're pro gun control. And also, they, they said the other day, we want to keep an eye on Twitter. So like, it's like, tearing something up and, like and Chinese, changing and adapting it to modern yeah, It's times. a disingenuous form of attack because the modern Democrats, the Biden admin, not the old Democrats, hate the Constitution and hate America. But well, you'll say the, that. They, the other, I don't think they've actually said aloud. One more point. The, it, it's Trump's point about interfering with elections. There's the actual fraud in terms of the voting machines and so on. But now it's very hard to say there was no interference because we've seen in the Twitter files yeah. that they did suppress stories, legitimate stories from the New York Post about the laptop. And we know that the FBI contacted Zuckerberg about it to suppress on the ballot. Now it's proven. We also know he had seven million more votes and overwhelmingly won the, won no, no. the electoral. But I'm college. sure you're familiar with the polls that say if people had known about the Hunter Biden laptop story, story, they would have switched to Trump had they known about that, and therefore that would have switched it, and Trump could have potentially won. So that is, that is election interference. And it's, it, it may not be literal voter fraud, yeah. which may or may not have also happened, but there is a, it's a type of fraud almost. I think what it is That's not what he's saying, though. What I it think is he is. He, he mentions the DNC. He is saying What it is at this point that. is a, uh, it, it's very much him setting out his stall. I don't think he has any legitimate expectation that there would, you know, that it would, that any kind of revisiting of the election results right. is likely. But he is strongly asserting that there was as he had said at the time, that there was, uh, you know... It's following... It's, it's malarkey. It's directly it's following the Twitter thought. file release, because he says, in working closely with big tech companies, the DNC... So it was the DNC that were proven to have been manipulating Twitter. That's what he's well, referring to. Well, there was also to. Trump's government, who were in power at the time, also contacting Twitter and saying, could you yeah. play, take these tweets off? It goes both ways. To a lesser extent, there was a sum of that, no, apparently. Did, okay, we we well, had to well, see as much apparently, really. they, That's were, been proven as well. No, but the thing is, Josh, there were... They were both... Both uh, parties were contacting Twitter and making uh, appeals. Hmm. But this came from within Twitter, this this uh, decision, and it was it was completely... Uh, obviously unacceptable and wrong. It was unjustified by their own terms of service and there was a massive internal, like, panic about it because they knew that they couldn't possibly justify it yes. and yet they were told to carry on with it. So it isn't like... There's, there's constant special pleading. That would happen in any kind of normal system and that would be, like, lobbying or whatever. You have to sort of learn to live with that to some extent. The bias within Twitter itself was... I, was I agree, was I, and I agree that's an issue, scale. but it, they did then change that. But I would say that some of those emails that everyone's going, look at this, they're talking about pictures of him in his underpants. About no, 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 that's, no, 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 that's nonsense. No, that's not nonsense. I've been reading it myself. Some of those that's links... Some of them are, but that's yes, not some, what, some of them. That's I, not what they're arguing about. That is no, nonsense. But that, what that some is people not are using what they are arguing about. They are talking about... I, I they, get Josh, that. They are talking about Hunter Biden committing serious drugs and sexual offences... I get that, but some of those links that they link to... link to extraordinary levels of corruption... Extraordinary levels of corruption in Ukraine with which now the US has a war. 
That is not... And that what you've just repeated, a calumny which is quite popular on the left at the moment, online, just saying, of saying it was just him in his underpants, and that's nonsense. Well, <laughs> that's nonsense. Well, I'm slamming that down. OK, it's well, you can slam true. it down. The it's links, not, links not, straight that to That is not under... what the issue was. I'm, was I'm not, not saying that's what the issue was. Well, yes, you are. <laughs> well, otherwise, no, I... don't raise it. Well, no, no, of course, but don't some raise of these... It's not the issue. Some of these emails that are talking about being released were all about his underpants. That's true as well. It's been said about Trump to take him seriously, but not literally. I think that's a good uh, okay. ending for this. Well, I take him literally. <laughs> Talking of lifetime incumbents, Tuesday's Express suggests that Biden <laughs> might have a crack at that too by the single expedient of having a second term. Yeah, we Demo should probably see him off. Democrats look to ditch Biden and modernize party, says Clinton pollster. This is Stan Greenberg, who's previously senior pollster with Bill Clinton, Al Gore, and our very own beloved Tony Blair. So, and he, he's saying that basically he doesn't think it will be Biden next time. And he said that the, the, the Republicans are, uh, the Democrats are vulnerable on borders and crime, but just in general, he doesn't rate Biden. And of course, this brings up the question who will it be? Biden's 80 years old. Who will it be? Gavin Newsom's ruled himself out, apparently. Uh, will it be Harris? A AOC, disturbingly, would be just about old enough. Imagine that terrifying vision. I mean, who else have they got? She well, clearly isn't in the running. She is. No, no, no I just threw it in for a joke. But, but really, the question, what I would say is the question, more importantly, is, is who, who's going to decide the election campaign, how the elections are, are, are run? Because if you look at it, it's all about absentee ballots, harvesting, this thing about rejected ballots where the Dems have accepted way more spoiled ballots than would have been in the past. Look at Arizona. Republicans lost dodgy voting machines. Look at Florida, where they fixed the, the yeah. system, and they won by miles. I would focus on that if I was a Republican. I'd just purely focus on well, they getting do, the election they, they, do need, they need to sort out their election. Uh, there needs to be reforms, and they need to, to speed it up and make it a lot more watertight. But in terms of the Democratic leadership, I do find it extraordinary, and this is not just uh, isolated to the uh, Democrats, it seems to be a problem across the West, to be honest, that there never seems to be any kind of, like, natural cultural or institutional process for, like, developing the obvious next yeah, team yeah. of leaders. Do you know what I mean? They, they like... Yeah, they scrabble they, around. They're, they're going to end up with Hillary again. I mean, who else yeah. is it? Who else is there? Have I, there might be someone coming through that we don't know. I mean, have I missed someone? No, but but we we don't live there. We're not as well, you know, we know. We know DeSantis is the obvious replacement for Trump, and I think I have a fairly clear idea of his strengths and weaknesses. And personally, if I was them, I would absolutely back DeSantis over over Trump. I, I just don't know who that is on the on well, the. I guess but well, they have I'm, their process, and it's. You know, that's what they do, is they I'm put them out yeah. there and they say... Their weird process I'm going last time got them Biden in, which <laughs> everyone feels was like a complete, you know, sham, because obviously you'd had... You'd had uh, well, all they cared about was beating Trump, and they thought that he was the best person for it, and he did it. Whether he's the best person to run the country, yeah. that's he like debatable. He didn't really do it, did he? They, they gave it to him, and, they, I mean, he stopped campaigning two weeks before the election. Well, he still they beat, basically he did just beat took Trump. Over. It was totally he legitimate. He didn't beat Trump. The Democrats okay. beat Trump. That's okay. my view. That's my point. Well, they, they, kind of, they kind of created a, uh, a shell. Well, I would argue he beat Trump. Well, <laughs> because he is now the... He is the president, but president. is he the president? I think I would argue no, he's not. He's, I mean, obviously, he's titular at, at office as president, but you look at him, you can barely finish he's a sentence. He's, he's a hologram. Not running the he's country, a total hologram. Exactly. So, Josh, Daily <laughs> Mail now. What did you say? I said he's a hologram. Yeah, yeah that's what I... Well, I, you know, I don't know if you were, if you were being, like, joking the, about literal. it, but that is virtually what he is. He has no substance at all. Daily Mail, it sounds like there is a new product on the black market market, uh, child marijuana. That yeah, the good. best kind of marijuana. Yeah. Uh, it, child marijuana use has soared 250% in the last 20 years, replacing alcohol as the drug of choice for under-18s. You have to read about a page before you finally figure out that it's in America, <laughs> which they sort of slowly, they'll drop in, like, the word state. Yeah, federal. Or what, yeah, fe <laughs> federal. Have oh, we changed federal? something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when they finally get there, you're like, oh, this is in America. Um, and they seem to be drawing a connection, obviously, between the increase in legalised uh, marijuana over there, yeah. children taking it. The difference is, replacing is different from... I'd be more worried if it was superseding, i.e. alcohol is a very bad drug for children as well. Ideally, yeah. they wouldn't be doing alcohol or marijuana. So what are you saying? They're doing so much marijuana that they haven't stopped doing alcohol, but it's... Well, no, no, in the, that they are doing less alcohol... Right. ..and that they're now taking more marijuana. Both of them have negative effects. Children shouldn't be doing either of them. No. Um, and... Uh, but the, it, I guess it's about what's readily available it, and yeah, what's easier to get. It's because of the wave of legalisation. So they've legalised yeah. it, and this is one of the grotesque side effects of it, because government shouldn't be legalising serious drugs like weed. You know, I find well, it Some really... people argue... 
is it? Is, you know, I mean, it is. Well, well, I mean, alcohol is a serious drug in comparison. When they well, let's ban that as well. well. When, okay. Well, when they, well, certainly we do for under 18s okay. anyway, which is great. We have um, news from the Independent now. It seems the British Museum is not actually about to lose its marbles just yet. Oh, yeah. No plans to change law over Parthenon sculptures, Rao, says number 10. So, so this is the Elgin marbles. We're going to hand them back to Greece now, where maybe not. But George Osborne, another yeah. blast from the past. We've got Gordon yes. Brown, we've got George Osborne. He's chairman of the British Museum, and he's been holding secret talks with the Greek prime minister about the possible return of them. So he's still up to his shenanigans. Well, the worst thing about that is they've been doing them in London, and you think, well, at least hold the talks in Greece so you can get a holday out of it. Good point. It's a good point. And it, anyway, so, they, they, so we're not sure if it's happening or not. Osborne's to something secret and uh, I mean look if we I mean you know what if we give everything back we'll have we'll have nothing left will we and people, <laughs> people you know people you know what if I, I just thought what if our culture is just stealing stuff then it's uh, it's not fair at us no well, I don't museums know. are they, they seem to be a sort of crisis of confidence in museums there's a, a number of stories have been coming mm. through the welcome foundations collection recently mm. which they've just completely closed down because mm. it's sort of it's it's just irredeemably tainted with a colonial mindset or something I think we have to understand that all all artefacts, when they're placed in a building with with labels on them, explaining them, that there is always going to be a sort of frame, isn't there? There's always going to be a kind of story about how they ended up in this place. You can't just present things neutrally and say, well, 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 I don't know how it got here, but this is this is its backstory. I mean, it is it is plunder, obviously. Yeah. Well, to an extent. Well, some of them, although some if we get to the next story, safe. actually, interestingly, there wasn't plunder. But we can uh, we can what, talk about that. If what we want. the uh, the totem pole? No, the totem pole is fine. But they are actually talking. What's really interesting is the stuff. I don't even, you know about the uh, bronzes being sent back to uh, the Benin. To, to Benin. Well, it yeah. turns out the uh, the church was sent. The Archbishop of Canterbury was sending back two two of them that they had. It turns out they were actually made in the 1980s, and they were <laughs> and they were presents to the church, and they've sort of said, "Oh no, we're sending them back." It's like. Well, yeah. that's got nothing to do with anything. Well, it's quite a good way of getting rid of unwanted souvenirs, I suppose. Anyway, coming up, we'll be talking why men don't have a problem with polygamy, what it means to go goblin mode, and the correct way to use an advent calendar. That's all after the break. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio, or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fungary debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Welcome back to the final section of Headliners. I'm Simon Evans. Let's get straight back into it, Nick. We have polyamorous relationships now. They're growing in popularity, according to Tuesday's Mail. Yes. Polyamorous, I should just say, 
Nothing to do with parrots, although it may involve a cockatoo. Wow. <laughs> um, this, this show what a changed. joke. I love um, that one. I'm very pleased with that. Good. <laughs> so a third of men are open to having more than one partner, but just 11% of women think multiple lovers is a good idea. So it's a study where they, they asked about polygamy, and they asked about polyandry, which, of course, very different from polyamory, which is just posh cheating. But obviously, polygamy, when a man marries more than one woman, polyandry, the opposite. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? It's not really, it's not an equal playing field. I was listening to an interesting philosopher called uh, Andrew Tate, and he had a good point that ah, men ah, have always, ah. like men and kings particularly, and things like that, have always had sort of multiple wives in history, but it's always been frowned upon for women to do the same. And I suppose yeah. there are obvious reasons to do with child rearing and the different reproductive strategies, you might Doesn't say. Doesn't happen in nature, does it? Right, the, the reproductive strategies of men versus women, but, uh, and, and societal reasons. But basically, it's the difference between being a legend or a, or a beta, but basically, or yeah, a cock, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like you've either got multiple, you're a man with multiple women or you're a woman with multiple men, but that's much stranger and more rare. And, and it turns out even women are not interested in it when you actually look at the statistics. Uh, it's, it's a very small percentage of women say they would like that, and a slightly higher percentage of men say they would want to do it. I think the, the, uh, it, it needs addressing as well. There's a kind of fantasy version of it, isn't there? Yeah. Like Ursula Andress surrounded by sort of, you know, glistening sex slaves or whatever in H. Ryder <laughs> Haggart films. The, the truth is, most of these people, when you see them, who are involved in polyamorous relationships, you, you're kind of like, you just want to back away a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And I mean? also, I think that the, the idea that the woman is like, I've, I've, you know, there's a few comics on the circuit who are, like, in polyamorous relationships. Oh, but and they're always trying to sort of be like, oh, yeah, she, she's, as in, she's got as much power as me. And then when I meet the, 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 the partner, yeah. she's always, like, very meek and sort of put oh, upon. And really? It's, yeah, always. Every I, single time, it's never... You're like, no, this is his choice. I, there are a few I, of these on the comedy circuit. Yeah, I always thought yeah. it was that she just... I just thought that they were kind of weak and she wants to do what she wants and they pretend that it's an open relationship when really she's just cheating no, on No, no, it's yeah. the other way around. It's always like, oh, he wants to cheat. But he's like, oh, no, okay. no, we talk about it. We're all, you know... Well, we certainly seem to be in agreement that it's rarely uh, an entirely balanced arrangement. Uh, it, I mean, that's the fact in relationships generally, isn't it? They always say somebody always has the power and it's yeah. the one who cares the least. <laughs> Josh, Tuesday Sun now has bad use for your bad use, bad news for your crisp and pizza sandwich habit. I guess you've just been eating some pizzas on the yeah. way in. Uh, <laughs> eating highly processed food could up your risk of dementia, scientists warn. This is a terrifying article because that is essentially my diet. I expect this is America again. Well, yeah, well, there is, uh, there's, they've, they've studied uh, nine, nearly a million people, oh no, no, it's a million people uh, that have dementia already in the UK. But essentially, this is actually quite a hard article to read, and it's not just because I've also been eating terrible food today. Research has found that for every 10% increase in someone's daily intake of ultra-processed foods, they had a 25% higher risk of dementia. And I actually took a photo of this because I'm going to look at this every time I'm going to actually need to eat stuff. Then at the very end of the article, it goes, uh, another doctor comes, oh, there's not actually that much strong evidence. And you're like, well, you just terrified me for three pages. Yeah, yeah. And made, I made lots of life well, changes. Well, you'll be healthier generally anyway. Your skin I think, is already looking clearer. Generally. Thanks, mate. I just think eat more nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Eat more nuts. Eat more nuts and healthy food. That's what I'm going to try to do. Nick, Tuesday's Mirror Now. The Oxford English Dictionary announces this year's annual reminder that we live in a desperately illiterate and unlettered civilization on the point of ultimate collapse. Well, you've covered it very well there, Simon. <laughs> yeah. Word of the year announced by Oxford Dictionaries. And it is goblin mode. Now, haters will say, or Joe Biden types might say, well, that's, is that really one word? But it's, there's a hyphen, so it is, it is one word. But... Um, you know, it, and it defines it as the type of behaviour which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly or greedy, typically in a way that rejects social norms or expectations. In other words, left-wing. They could have I've, gone with that. Um, I genuinely hadn't heard this word ever used. Have you? No, it's it? an online type term, yeah. Simon. It's, it's terminally but online. I'm online a lot. I'm in Twitter. Well, lot. yes, I, I heard of it much. <laughs> I heard of it a few <laughs> times. And the, uh, Miriam Webster went with gaslighting, and it's quite funny. And then the, uh, the mirror says here that uh, the, other, the word of the year, the other year was vax because of misinformation and the anti-vax. I'm like, you're gaslighting us now, Mira. But anyway, yeah, goblin mode, it just basically means the total degeneration of our culture. It doesn't make any sense because it's 94.3% of 340,000 people voted for this. Yeah. And they're saying this is the big one. Well, if they're all about goblin mode, surely they're not going to be motivated enough to yeah, actually yeah. fill in a form and vote it's in paradox. this stuff. Yeah. I, don't, I do see evidence of it. I understand the proposition mm. is not heard, but, you know, it's, it's, it's living in athleisure wear, isn't it, basically? That's the dream. It's I mean, never, that is you know. literally the dream. Kids moving out, hands down the pants. One word which I did see Kelly. which was in the shortlist was metaverse. I quite like metaverse. Metaverse, useful, and I stand with. I stand, stand with, with not yeah, all as three one words. Word. I know, but it's all as That's one outrageous. word. That's outrageous. 
Anna. Okay. Decline. Our uh, next story, I think this might be our final story for the evening. This is from the Daily Mail. It is uh, a bit of a blue dress, gold dress moment, but it's in reading advent calendars. Oh, yeah. yeah. Parents are divided over which way they should open their advent calendar. Mm. This is annoying. So, basically, there's a, some sort of on debate. In, it's, I mean, it's in Australia, so let's all calm down. But it's a, and I suppose they do do everything upside down, because it's a debate between do you start with one or 24? Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's no debate. It's a calendar. You start with one. But apparently, the, the internet being what it is, there are sort of flat earth types. But I quite like 20, this. I've yeah. never thought of that before, but it does make sense. It's, I, I think they're definitely designed for you to end up with 24. Yeah, you get the big chocolate the big at the end. Yeah, it's yeah. a calendar. I know. Have but as, a, it, but as yeah, kids, yeah. though, as it says here, it's better for kids because it's building down. You're like, what? oh, my God, yeah. five days to go to... People are yeah, subversive. Yeah. No, How many dangerous sleep? subversive. Yeah, the kids Christmas. are so annoying all the time. And you can say, just look at your advent calendar. There's 12 left or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. What? Up we it. have a dog no, one now with dog treats in it as well. And I don't think he cares either way, I have to say. They're not proposing yeah. a new idea. That's saying it's how you should have always done it. They're just wrong. That's all we have time for. I hope we've settled that. That's, uh, that's the end of the show. Thank you to my guests. I'll be back tomorrow, joined by Louis Schaefer. Yes, hooray. Simon Fanshawe, wonderful. This will be a tremendous show. See you then. I'm Mark Dolan. Join me at 11 on GB News for Headliners, in which I'll be joined by two of the UK's top comedians discussing tomorrow's papers. If it's an important story, we'll cover it, but we'll have some fun along the way. <laughs> Headliners, the late night paper review that won't send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11 p.m. on GB News. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubery, and you can join me every weekday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debate, some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubery, Monday to Friday, six till seven on Jubes and Kerr. I'm Mark White.